David Smith here with another Flip Classroom Math video. A few tips before we get started. First, remember that you can slow down or speed up the playback if that helps you follow along. You can also pause the video at any point to perfect your notes or if you want to try the problems before I explain them. Lastly, remember that you could turn on the captions and read my words going along the bottom of your screen. Today's topic Solving quadratics by splitting the middle term. Now you probably remember from our factoring chapter what splitting the middle term is. I will cover that again just to review it. And if you recall also it's probably the most difficult factoring method that we've covered so far in this class. So definitely expect to practice that if you want to master it. Okay, so let's do it on this problem. Let's first take a look so that we know this is a split the middle term factory. I have three terms. Okay, so it's not a difference of squares, that's only two terms. And it's not a perfect square because that is a perfect square, but this one is not. So 5x squared is not a perfect square, so we know we can't factor this with the perfect squares pattern. So what we're going to do is we're going to split the middle term. If you recall, we multiply the a times the c, ac equals 5 times 4, which is 20. Now we need two factors of positive 20 that add up to negative 21. And these factors are negative 1 times negative 20. This equals positive 20 that gets us our AC and negative 1 plus negative 20 is negative 21. So these are our two factors. So now I can split my middle term 5x squared minus 20x minus x plus 4 equals 0. So I just split my middle term. Now I'm going to look at this one and pull out my greatest common factor. That's going to be 5x. That's in both of these. So 5x times x minus 4. Now check this out. This kind of already looks like x minus 4, except it's minus x plus 4. If I factor out a negative 1, I'm going to get just what I want. So negative 1 times, now that's positive x minus 4 equals 0. So now if you remember you're splitting the middle term, you'll know that we're on the right track because these two binomials are the same, x minus 4 and x minus 4. That's what we need to write this next step. 5x minus 1 times x minus 4 equals 0. Now I can see I'm running out of space, so I'm going to get rid of this problem. And we're just going to carry this on over to the top. Okay, so I'm going to do my branch. I have 5x minus 1 equals 0. That's my first branch. Let's solve that one. I get 5x equals positive 1. x equals 1 fifth. So that's my first solution. Now I need to solve this branch. This is the x minus 4 equals 0 branch. This gives me x equals 4. So my two solutions here are 1 fifth and 4. Okay, let's try another one. 2x squared equals 3x minus 1. If you're feeling good, pause the video right now and see if you can do this problem. Okay, let's take a look. My first step is to set one side equal to 0. So I'm going to move my 3x and my negative 1 over here by subtracting 3x from both sides and adding 1 to both sides. That's going to leave me with 2x squared minus 3x plus 1 equals 0. So now I've taken care of that step. Now I want to look at this three-term expression and figure out how to factor it. Now, you know we're going to split the middle term because that's what this lesson's about, but let's just pretend we don't know that. How would I be able to tell? I have three terms, so it's not a difference of squares. Now I look for perfect squares. 1 is a perfect square, so again, that might be working. However, 2x squared is not a perfect square, so I can't use that pattern. So now I'm going to try splitting the middle term because I do have a number in front of my x squared. So ac equals 2 times 1, which is 2. So I need two factors of positive 2 that add up to negative 3. So that's going to be negative 1 times negative 2 because that equals positive 2 negative 1 plus negative 2 equals negative 3. So those are my two factors for splitting my middle term. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do 2x squared 
minus 2x minus x plus 1. So I, I grouped this 2x next to this 2x squared because that's got a nice big greatest common factor. So watch this. 2x times x minus 1 is what I get when I factor this pair. Now just like that last problem, this one is almost what we need. I need an x minus 1. I have a negative x plus 1. So I can factor out a negative 1, and I end up with x plus or x minus 1. Now that lets us go to our last step here of 2x minus 1 times x minus 1. Now, what did I leave off here? Starting here, I left something important off my equation. If you for realize that I forgot my equals 0, you are right. Fortunately, that's easy to fix at this point. Okay, so now I'm going to continue this on over here. I have my two expressions times each other. So I set each one equal to 0 and solve for x. So let's do this first one. 2x minus 1 equals 0. Move the 1 over by adding it to both sides. x, 2x equals 1. Now I'm going to divide through by 2 and get x equals 1 half. So that's my first solution. Now let's do the second branch. x minus 1 equals 0. Move the 1 over by adding it, I get x equals 1. So this one has two solutions, 1 half and 1. Okay, let's do another one. This one is going to be a quadratic that we can factor. Right now it sort of doesn't look like that. But deep breath, check it out. We can expand this and get our squared term back, and then we can rearrange this and get it equal to 0, and then we can factor. So first off, let's do distributive property. x times 3 is 3x, plus x times x is just x squared, plus 3 equals 31. Now I need to get this side equal to 0, so I'm going to subtract 31. I'm also going to change the order of these. I like my x squared term to go first. So this is x squared plus 3x. Now plus 3 minus 31 is going to give us minus 28 equals 0. Okay, let's split the middle term. a is 1, c is negative 28. So ac equals 1 times negative 28, which is negative 28. Now I need two factors of negative 28 that add up to positive 3. And those are going to be 7 times negative 4. Because that's negative 28, that's a 7, and 7 plus negative 4 equals positive 3. So my two factors are 7 and negative 4. So let's split our middle term. x squared plus 7x minus 4x minus 28. Now what's, what's common in here? It's just an x. So I have x times x plus 7. Now what's common in these two? Negative 4 minus 4 times x plus 7. Because I factored a negative 4 out of the x, it leaves a positive x. When I factor negative 4 out of negative 28, two negatives, that leaves a positive. And so I'm going to carry this on over here. So our last step, before we do that, we're going to check. Oh look, I have 2x plus 7, so I'm in the right place. So that's one of my factors. My other one is going to be x minus 4. So I want to get x minus 4 times x plus 7. Now like last time, I didn't carry down my equals 0. It's a very easy mistake to make. Most of the time, you'll catch it. When you go to solve these, you're going to realize, oh, I need to have this equal to 0. Good habit. Okay, so my branch. x minus 4 equals 0. So x equals 4. This branch is x plus 7 equals 0, so my x is going to be minus 7. So this is 4, negative 7. Okay? Okay, one last problem. Like the last one, this one needs a little bit of work before it gets into the right form where we can figure out how to factor it. So again, I've got to do an expansion step first. I have to expand this section here so I can get my quadratic terms and then bring my 9 over to set this side equal to 0. So let's go ahead and do that. 3x times x is 3x squared. 3x times 2 is 6x equals 9. 
Now we're going to move the 9 over by subtracting it from both sides. 3x squared plus 6x minus 9 equals 0. Okay. Now, in case this was a perfect square, we might this might have our attention. 9 is a perfect square. However, negative 9 is not. Negative 9 does not have a square root. We can't do that. So even though 9 is suggestive, it's not a perfect square. So we couldn't factor this one using that pattern. So that's our clue, along with the fact that we have a 3 sitting out here, that we need to split the middle term. So I'm going to figure out what my AC is. AC is going to be 3 times negative 9, which is negative 27. So now I need two numbers that multiply to negative 7 that add to the middle term, that add to 6. What do you think those numbers are? How about 9 times negative 3? That's negative 27, and 9 plus negative 3 equals 6. So those are our two terms for splitting this middle term. So let's do that. 3x squared plus 9x minus 3x minus 9. Now, I'm going to change that, but stop, pause the video perhaps, and Think about what I'm going to do here, because there's a better way to do this. This last step. If you notice that I have 3x squared and a 3x, these two would be, would be better paired together, as would these two, because they both have 9s in them. So let's do that. Let's fix that right there. So minus 3x plus 9x minus 9. Now this is going to work out a little better, I think. There's a 3x in both of these. So 3x times x minus 1. That's the, the factoring of these two. Here I've got a 9 in both, so plus 9 times x minus 1 again. So we have the right, uh, we're at, in the right place because we notice our two binomials are the same. So my last step is going to be 3x plus 9 times x minus 1 equals 0 equals zero, equals zero. Gosh, I seem to forget that every time. I catch it. So if I was on a test or a quiz, I'd be fine. Better not to. Better to do it right the first time. Okay, so let's do our split. 3x plus 9 equals zero. Subtract 9 from both sides. 3x equals negative 9. Divide by 3. x equals negative 3. Okay, so there's one solution. This one is super easy. x minus 1 equals 0. x equals 1. So my two solutions are negative 3 and 1. There you go. Now that you've finished the video, take a moment to jot down any questions that you have so you can bring them to our next class and get some help. You can also watch the video again to perfect your understanding. If you enjoyed the video, please click the like button down below, and if you'd like to help me grow my YouTube channel, please click subscribe.